one of the limitations for the naive graph animation method is it do not consider the system condition. For example, if you have an ill condition system, small change in the coefficient or noise will result in large change in the solution. So in this case, you might obtain the solution that you falsely determine it to be the true solution. Previously, we have shown you how to use the determinant to make the analysis of the system condition to check whether it is well conditioned, ill conditioned or singular system. In this study, you will learn how to perform the scaling analysis in order to standardize the size of the determinant so that you can obtain a correct determinant analysis. The first improvement that we can perform for the gas elimination is use the determinant analysis. We can find the determinant for the matrix A, which is the system matrix AX equal to matrix B. So in this case, based on the value for this determinant, we can tell the system condition either it is singular system, ill condition system, or the well condition system. Determinant not equal to zero indicates it is a well condition system. Close to zero within plus minus 0 0.1 indicates it is a ill condition system. And lastly, if it is equal to zero, then it will be a singular system. For example, in this case, we can obtain the matrix format where you have the system matrix A to be 10, 11, 20, 20. So you take the determinant here and you obtain it to be negative 20. So in this case, when we compare the condition here, you found that it's not equal to zero, where you can say it's a well-conditioned system. On the other hand, if you scale the equation 1 and 2 here by divide it with 20, in this case, you obtain this matrix and after you perform the determinant for the A matrix here, you obtain negative 0 0.05. And if you compare the condition, you found that it's within 0 0.1 here, so it's very really close to 0. And we can say it's ill condition. So which one is true? Is it well conditioned or is it ill conditioned system? In fact, the first study here is wrong where the well conditioned system is wrong because you take the determinant without scaling. You need to determine the determinant after the scaling only can reflect the actual system condition. And the function for the scaling is to standardize the determinant size. So how can we know we need to scale the equation by divide it with 20? The hint is to scale the maximum element in the left hand side row. So left hand side row here is here and it indicate the system matrix A. On your left hand side the maximum element will be 20. So in this case, you need to divide 20 so that you obtain the maximum element become 1. So on the second equation, also you have 20 here. So you need to divide 20 in order to obtain maximum element 1. So 10, you need to divide 20, you obtain 0 0.5. 11 divided by 20, 0 0.55. And don't forget on the right hand side, 100 divided by 20, you get 5. Divide 104 with 20, you obtain 5.2. If let's say you have a new system matrix to be 30 here, so in the first equation here, you must divide with 30. So you need to be careful that on the right hand side here, although the element here is bigger than the left hand side, but we do not scale it based on the right hand side. We always scale it based on the system matrix. Bear in your mind that you need to perform determinant together with the scaling analysis in order to identify the system condition accurately. In this example, you see the left hand side matrix, which is the system matrix here. For each row here, the maximum element is not equal to 1. And for the next row, the maximum element is not equal to 1 as well. 
if you determine the determinant directly without the scaling, then in this case, although you obtain the answer equal to 8, which indicates well conditioned system, but we are not sure because the determinant that you have might consist of error. So we should not do this and we should perform the scaling first before we determine the determinant. So we scale the first row here to let the maximum element equal to 1. To do this, we need to divide it by 3. So we divide the first equation by 3. So for the second row, we need to divide by 2. So you can see that for the first equation, you divide by 3 so that you obtain the first element here to be 1 and you divide it with 2 for the second equation and you obtain the element here to be 1 and if you check this determinant you found that the maximum element is 1 so this means that you perform the scaling successfully after calculate the determinant you obtain 4 over 3 which is not equal to 0 so in this case, we can say the actual system condition is well conditioned. So for well conditioned system, we can continue to solve the problem to obtain a unique solution. Similarly, in this example, we should not directly compute the determinant without scaling. So if you check the condition here, we do not know whether this is true or not due to the error in the determinant. So we have to perform the scaling. We check the maximum element here to be 4. So for the first equation, we need to divide 4. And then for the second row here, the maximum element is 2. So we have to divide 2. So by doing this, we can obtain this determinant. And you can check that the maximum element here is 1 now. So it means that we perform the scaling successfully. And once you solve this determinant, we obtain it to be 0 and we can say the actual system condition is a singular system. So for singular system, we cannot obtain the solution as it might have no solution at all. As you can recall in the graph, there is no intersection or it might have infinity solution where you have intersection and infinity point. In this example, if we check the system matrix, we found that the maximum element is not equal to 1. So we cannot find the determinant directly from here and you have to perform the scaling. And we check the element, the maximum element here to be 20. So we have to divide 20 for the first equation to obtain the maximum element here to be 1. So for the second equation is 20, so you need to divide 20. Then you should be able to obtain the new system matrix where you have the maximum element to be 1 at each row here so it means that your scaling is successful then we can continue to determine the determinant and you find the answer to be negative 0 0.05 which indicate the ill condition system for ill condition or ill post system we can obtain many solutions we call in the graphical method where you obtain intersection at many points the solution of the ill condition system is very sensitive to the error or noise. Small noise can be amplified through the inverse process and make the solution to be wrong. So we have to be careful when we have the ill condition system. This is the previous example that we show this matrix to be ill condition system. And we can find the solution x1, x2 by using the Kramer rule to be 4 and 3. For the second case here, we add small error or small noise to the system condition by changing 11 to 10.5. This is frequently happened when we measure the actual system condition by using the measurement technique. We might have the measurement noise contaminated in our measurement. Then you continue to find the solution x1, x2 and you find the answer 8 and 1 respectively. It's surprisingly to see the solution to change so much when you compare these two cases. Although you only add a small error to the system metric. So you must know that small error in in-condition system will result in large change in the solution.
So this is called the noise amplification. So we know that this solution is wrong and is contaminated with the noise due to the ill condition. To obtain back the actual solution, we can perform the treatment. The treatment is known as regularization method, such as the singular value decomposition or the Tikhonov method. We can improve the condition from ill to well condition by using the treatment. However, this involves more advanced techniques, therefore, it is out of scope in this study.